Hello my friends and welcome to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching and fantastic to see you. Hope you've had an awesome day. As you know, many of you know, I am heavily invested in Tesla stock. That is in spite of, well, I have to say I have a fairly unbiased knowledge of the EV industry. If you think about it, I make videos about all companies. Pretty much, I've made a video about, I think, well, maybe 40 different car companies over the last few months alone. So I'm not a Tesla channel. I'm not a BYD channel. I'm not a Neo channel. I'm not an Xpeng channel. I'm not a Volkswagen channel. I'm not a Toyota channel. I'm not a, well, I'm just an electric car channel. So you can see I don't have a lot of bias. I've done a lot of research on a lot of different things. I think I understand the Chinese car market fairly well, considering the amount of time I've put into trying to understand it. And yet I still think Tesla will become the world's largest company by 2030. Now, let's have a look at the most important news for Tesla over the past week. Well, number one, the Tesla Model X has been seen in the parking spots where Tesla vehicles are picked up by trucks and delivered to customers. Now, there has been no Tesla Model X vehicles delivered this year because production was stopped for the new model. So it's taken Tesla a lot longer than they expected and or anyone else expected to actually get the Model X complete, the new model, and then of course start delivering that to customers. But it looks as though they will be delivered within the next few days. Otherwise, why on earth would Tesla sit the cars out there waiting for trucks to pick them up? That's good news. Now, the interesting news here, in my opinion, this is something why worth asking questions about. If you want to order a Tesla Model X now, you can't get delivery until March to April of 2022. But no, wait for it. That delivery date has been changed. It's now May to June of 2022. Now that is a long, long, long way away. We're talking about eight months. For delivery of a luxury vehicle. Now, obviously, Tesla makes higher profit margins. We all know this. Tesla said this on the Tesla Model S and the Model X versus the profit margins they make on the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3. It makes sense. The luxury vehicles with the highest sticker price, high sticker price give a better margin for the company. So Tesla has traditionally focused on delivering those cars as a priority, and that's what they do now. If you buy the Tesla Model Y performance or the Model 3 performance, Tesla will make it more of an effort to deliver that one to you because they make more profit on it. Every car company does this. It's not a secret. It's done by every single car company on the planet because ultimately they want to make a profit. So the question here is why is it going to take so long if you order a Tesla Model X today to receive one? Eight months is a long, long, long time. This can only mean one of two things. Either one, Tesla has an enormous number of orders for the Tesla Model X. There is no other possible logical explanation for this fact. Eight months for delivery, there can only be one possible reason for that, a huge order backlog. Or can there? Could a second possible reason be that Tesla is now planning to use 4680 battery cells in the new Model X for new orders? Well, I'm not sure, but let's have a look at this article for Jim Ringgold on Clean Technica. Jim says, don't take all of this as gospel since it is not official and lots of info out there turns out to be incorrect, but photos are very reliable if you can believe your eyes. It's well understood that Tesla likes to make its own components to reduce dependence on others, a clear result of how Elon Musk sees and approaches work. This is quite the opposite of the two big companies, Ford and General Motors, which farm out every piece of the car that they can. Well, to be fair, on General Motors and Ford, this is just done by the entire industry, except for companies like BYD and some Chinese companies. Pretty much all of the mainstream auto automotive industry farms out almost everything. So that's just normal. Anyway, Tesla started making seats for its cars when availability and customization from existing manufacturers was limited. Tesla's seats are now great. The same is true of their electric motors and gearboxes and suspension components made in 
house. Now, it's only consistent that it would be Musk's desire for Tesla to make its own vehicle batteries as well, instead of having a vendor make batteries for their specification. Tesla has plenty of battery demand to satisfy its original Gigafactory partner, Panasonic. There are Powerwall batteries and the bigger battery packs for utilities, which Tesla, as you know, have had a huge number of orders of late. I'm not sure how they're going to actually supply that many cells, but it's great that they're getting this many orders, especially for battery storage, because we know that's used in clean energy storage from usually from solar or wind. So that's great news. Now, there are other, the Powerwall batteries and the bigger battery packs for utilities, among other things that use the original battery size. However, better batteries for its trucks and cars were desired and more production, thus the 4680 battery cell, the prototype battery factory for the upcoming Tesla 4680 vehicle battery is known by Tesla as the Cato Road facility. It's located in Fremont, quite close to the original Tesla car factory that was purchased from former associate Toyota. A Tesla battery factory is also under construction at Gigafactory Berlin, originally designated as a warehouse to get the provisional building permit from the German fax machine using bureaucracy. Seriously, they use fax machines in Germany still. Crazy. Tesla says all the high-speed production equipment has been ordered for Germany and Giga Texas based on the designs perfected at the Cato Road prototype. The video below shows an aerial image of the Tesla battery factory that is part of Giga Texas. Notice that it is further along than Gigafactory Berlin. Makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, for those of you who don't know, it took 19 years to get an airport approved and built in Germany. It's a very slow process over there. Now, the big news, the reliable yield in the Tesla prototype Cato Road battery factory is now reported to be high enough for profitable production. Some manufacturing processes apparently are still being smoothed out as battery output speed is increased. So as they're making the machines faster, getting more cells out, of course, they're probably coming across some small issues where they can fix things. No one really knows the full story here, unfortunately. Now, the current output is being used for battery testing vehicle installation design and inventory for upcoming and unnamed vehicles i.e cybertruck semi and potentially roadster as well now a battery cathode production facility factory at giga texas is just breaking ground it will convert raw material to usable cathodes to support the starting capacity of 500,000 vehicles a year not very many but obviously they plan to scale that up over time some raw cathode material will come from a new South Carolina mine. For those not following the exact details, these factories will produce the 4680 battery that will likely become one of two standard batteries for Tesla vehicles. Obviously, the other one is the 2170. It is a steel jacket battery and will become a structural component between the front and the rear chassis castings. Another Tesla industry first innovation. With initial production at each factory starting at batteries for half a million vehicles, so Gigafactory Berlin, half a million, Gigafactory Texas, half a million. That makes it a one million vehicle production capacity between the two factories to begin with. Obviously, they plan to produce a lot more vehicles after a few years. Now, Elon has described the batteries coming out of these facilities like bullets. That's what he said, apparently. Indeed, and they are aiming at the competition. Bang, 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 bang. And we haven't even discussed the performance of the 4680 battery cell. By the way, for those of you who are interested, I think the 4680 battery cell will eventually be primarily running with lithium iron phosphate battery cells. Even Elon himself has said he believes that is the chemistry, battery chemistry of the future. He didn't mention solid state, by the way. Interesting. Now, in other news, Android Auto now works on Tesla vehicles through the browser. It's not the same sort of system as, say, Android Auto in a standard car, but at least it works. That's a good change by Tesla. It shows that they're actually listening to their customers. Now, also, Tesla employees have been celebrating producing the 1 millionth battery pack at Gigafactory Nevada. Now, interestingly, Gigafactory Nevada is still only at about 30% capacity of the planned overall size, but Tesla and Panasonic 
found ways to optimize production within that 30% space. In other news in China, Tesla has started suing former customers for defamation. I think, I'm not sure if this is a good move, but I do understand where they're coming from because there's some pretty crazy stories coming out of China, some people that are clearly just trying to defame the company. I do think there's a very high chance that some of these people saying these things they're saying have been paid by, who knows, somebody, some companies, whatever. It does appear based on how hard they're going at Tesla that this is a strategy other automakers are using in China. I have done business in China, I've lived there and have experienced not this level of attack, but some level of attack that can be a bit uh, kind of crazy, to be honest. Now, in addition to that, Elon Musk has called out Joe Biden for being controlled by unions after Tesla was snubbed at the American US EV summit. Now, after SpaceX successfully launched its Inspiration mission with civilians to orbit, Elon Musk was asked why he thinks Biden has yet to congratulate him or SpaceX, and the CEO answered that he is still sleeping. <laughs> so, anyway, many saw this as a reference to Trump's Sleepy Joe nickname for the president. Now, during an interview at the Code Conference on Tuesday, the Code Conference is really cool, actually. If you're not sure what that is, look up Tesla Code Conference. Musk was asked why he made that tweet and the CEO responded, Biden held his EV summit. Didn't invite Tesla, invited General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, and the UAW. The EV summit at the White House didn't mention Tesla even once and praised General Motors and Ford for leading the EV revolution. Doesn't it sound a little bit biased? It's not the friendliest of administrations. It seems to be controlled by the unions. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-union. I'm not at all, but I am anti-union corruption. And in this case, well, the UAW has been caught for corruption many times. Unfortunately, hopefully they start to do the right thing from here on. Now, what about Tesla deliveries? Well, it seems as though the street's consensus is that Tesla deliveries will be between 222,000 vehicles and around 240,000 vehicles. Bulls are going for the 235,000 kind of range, whereas the more skeptical analysts are looking at around about the 215 to 220,000 range. Now, obviously, Tesla has been production constrained, as has well almost every other automaker, except maybe for BYD, who make their own semiconductors. And one of the most optimistic analysts was Rob Mara of the Tesla Daily Podcast. And he said on Twitter that he is estimating that the company will deliver 247,000 vehicles for Q3 2021. Now, Rob actually has a pretty good track record. So I'm going to go with him and I'm going to say he's probably going to be about right. My guess is going to be, well, I'll go with 240,000 deliveries. Now, what about Tesla in Norway? Well, people have been criticizing Tesla in Norway, saying that they're losing sales, that they're not that good anymore. Yeah, not true. That's cherry-picked information. Tesla actually leads EV charge in Norway, with three-quarters of September new car sales being electric in the country. 75% of car sales in Norway are electric now. If you're trying to resell an ICE vehicle, you're probably pretty much screwed. Now, Tesla is currently leading an electric offensive in Norway as new data from, I can't pronounce the name of them, but they are the Road Traffic Information Council of Norway, reveals that 78% of new car sales for September consisted of purely electric vehicles. Tesla's two most popular vehicles, the Model Y and the Model 3, contributed quite a bit to that number, making the electric automaker the most popular brand in Norway in September by a fairly wide margin. According to OFV statistics, the Model Y was Norway's most popular vehicle, regardless of powertrain, with 3,564 sales, making up 20% of the total September auto sales. The mass market crossover from Tesla dominated electric and gas-powered competitors, with the next closest model being, you guessed it, the Tesla Model 3, which was sold 2,218 times, accounting for 12.3% of total sales. In third place was the Skoda Enyaq, with 787 sales. Now, I'm really fascinated to see what happens when Gigafactory Berlin comes online and there's a lot more supply for Norway, a lot more supply for European countries as well. 
And of course, the prices go down, which they most certainly will for a variety of reasons. I've talked about that in other videos. Now, final story here for Tesla. Tesla has completed a build out of 100 supercharger stations in Shanghai. So Tesla celebrated the installation of its 100th supercharger station and 1,000th supercharger stall in Shanghai. It's a pretty big milestone for the company, and it makes them the world's first electric vehicle maker to install 100 charging stations in a single city. Now in August of this year, Giga Shanghai's Supercharger V3 production, version three production facility was completed. They completed the building out of a facility that will build Tesla's Supercharger version three. The Supercharger version three facility is reportedly capable of producing 10,000 V3, so the third variant of their charger, stalls per year, 10,000 per year. That's a lot of charges. Now, obviously, Gigafactory Shanghai's Supercharger version 3 production will play a significant role for Tesla in China as it plans to open superchargers all across the country. Personally, I don't think Tesla is ever going to be the number one vehicle supplier in China. There may be, but I don't, I think there's just so much competition in the country. I think that there are so many, I mean, there's 400 EV players there. There is enormous competition. There is just, it's a tough, tough market. Now, do I think Tesla will do well in China? Yes, absolutely. But not as well as they'll do in other countries like the United States and Europe and other places as well, Canada. Now, on that note, what do you think Tesla's going to do with its 4680 battery cells? Do you think they could go into the new Model X coming out? Well, we're looking at July, June, July next year. I think it's possible. And this is exciting news. You know, I love what Tesla's doing for the most part. There's a few little things that here and there, they, you know, they don't get quite right. But for the most part, I love what the company's doing and I'll continue to invest in the company. And I recommend you make them part of your portfolio as well. Thanks for watching the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.